I'm Heather from Heather Handmade and today I'm going to teach you how to make a gift basket for someone who sews. And this is full of goodies that they would love to receive. Let me tell you what is in the basket. There's some fabric scissors, there is a pin cushion, here is a thimble, there are new clippers, a new seam ripper, some new pins, a measuring tape. This little bag is full of specialty buttons that have um, permanent vinyl on them. There are some tags you can use, iron-on tags that you can put on your handmade clothing. There is some fat quarters in the colors that they love. I made all of this fabric filling. I cut out using the Cricut Maker. There's the new wavy rotary blade that you can insert into your maker and it actually cuts in a wavy way. I made this little fabric basket with the Cricut Maker. So today I'm going to teach you how to make the fabric filling, the fabric basket, the custom buttons and iron-on tags. I also added some permanent vinyl to the scissors and the seam ripper. The seam ripper says second chance because how many times have you gotten out the seam ripper and you need a second chance? The scissors say I will cut you because this is what we use to cut fabric and if someone uses these fabric scissors to cut something other than fabric. And then you put all your goodies and fabric filler in the fabric basket. The things I used were mostly Cricut products and I go into detail in the description below the video. Then the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut your iron-on vinyl with your Cricut machine. I'm using the Cricut Maker. That is what I have. And I cut out my iron-on vinyl tags from black iron-on vinyl. Then you're going to weed and separate each tag using your scissors and the weeding tool. Make sure you get the, um, the full outside that you're weeded and then all the little tiny pieces in the middle of the letters like the A and the B. Then these ones I'm going to leave unironed. So I put them on like a sheet of plastic when they're still on their plastic backing and then I cut them into separate pieces. That way I could give the tags away and they could still be used um, by the receiver and they can choose what fabric to put them on. Then I stored the tags in a little fabric bag so that they would not get lost in the fabric basket. I also cut out some extra tags and I decided to actually um, apply them to fabric so I could give some tags away that are already ironed onto fabric in case that someone wanted to use them right away or you wanted to have them as a tag that you actually sew into like a waistband or something and it's hanging down. So I used uh, Easy Press 2 and I applied the iron-on vinyl right onto some quilting cotton fabric you heat the front first and then the back. After it's heated, um, I peeled each um, backing off and I had each one of those great tags on the fabric. And they're so cute, they're so fun. I love the, um, the funny words I used. Then I cut each one, each tag apart and I left about a half an inch um, allowance around the iron-on vinyl in case someone wanted to fold the edges under or um, actually sew it into like a little pouch you can do whatever you want but um, you need that allowance in case you want to do something with it then I put all of these tags also in the little fabric bag along with the other tags that were not used then I cut, I used my Cricut Maker and I cut out some permanent iron-on vinyl. I chose to do 
white permanent vinyl. Um, I use the premium version because it's permanent and it stays really well even when you're using it. So I wanted the white to kind of blend in with my seam ripper and scissors and so that's why I went with white. I also applied the permanent vinyl on black buttons and the white looks um, has a very nice contrast with the black. So first you weed all of your little, these are the, it says handmade in a circle and it goes onto the buttons. So I weeded the excess and got out the little pieces and then I used the clear, um, the sticky clear stuff that you put on to permanent vinyl to take it off of the backing and then I applied it to a button. I found with the tiny letters I had to rub it and um, really be careful and work with it so that it would um, not peel off and get ruined. So I applied it to five different buttons and I put it in the bag as a perfect custom button as a gift. Then I weeded the next permanent vinyl. This is for the seam ripper and the words are pretty tiny and so you just have to be very careful when your words are so tiny. Um, I recommend maybe making your letters slightly larger than what I did or um, making the font bold so that it's not so tricky with all those tiny pieces. Then I applied the permanent vinyl right onto the seam ripper and I did it closer to the bottom where your hand um, isn't as your not hand isn't touching it as much and it says second chances it's so fun then I did the same with the scissors I weeded the excess I put it on the plastic um, the sticky backing and peeled it off of the backing then I applied it to the scissors I applied it um, in the middle of the scissors um, near the point where it connects at the screw so that it wouldn't be where my hands were and it's less likely to rub off. Um, and the scissors, it says, I will cut you. That's what it says. And the, the white does show up when it's not in a video. It's just a little hard to see with this camera. Next, you are going to cut out your fabric filler. So you need the specialty um, rotary blade that goes in the Cricut Maker and the blade is actually wavy. And I just put a piece of scrap fabric in. I used several scraps of fabric um, that I all cut out with the Maker. And I just did a whole bunch of rectangles, as many as I could fit in a 12 by 12 section. And it just cut out a bunch of rectangles with a wavy edge. So as you can see, when I peel that up, that all of those edges are wavy and I have tons of little rectangles cut out. Um, it's the perfect filler. It's so great to use up your scraps this way because it's so cute and soft and you know use up those scraps that you can't do much with. The next thing I cut out was the actual fabric basket. So I did quilting cotton and I used the regular rotary blade. So I had to cut out several different mats because you need the straps, the outer fabric, the inner fabric, both the bottom and the, um, the side. Then I cut out my inner facing and I cut out some batting because I wanted the fabric, the basket to be um, extra soft. So you have to use the fabric marker, which is those blue marks you see, and then the rotary blade. And it's actually a simplicity pattern that you can use and it will cut it out for you. Then I used my Easy Press 2 to um, uh, apply the inner facing and the fabric marker doesn't go away when you press it, which is really nice. So I just applied that inner facing on all the pieces that the pattern um, recommends. It's the side, the bottom, and the straps of the basket and I just applied it to the outer pieces and then the inner pieces I did the fleece with those so that I could keep it separate and um, prevent as much bulk. Then I'm not going to 
um, show everything about doing the basket since it's a simplicity pattern you can buy in design space but um, I'm gonna show you how I sewed it together so first you start with the straps and you sew right sides together the outer and the um, the lining fabric and the outer fabric and you use and half an inch seam allowance so there's two straps that I used and they are pattern piece number three which you can see that three written on in that blue ink then I sewed the side seam of the basket there's just one side seam and um, you do a half an inch seam allowance and stop at the dot instead of going all the way down and then, then you are going to take the straps and match the large blue circle on the edge of the straps with the large blue circles on the top of the basket. And you're going to base them in place at the top um, to keep them in place when you sew around the top edge of the basket. Then you are going to pin the bottom of the basket to the side of the basket and it's a little tricky doing a square edge to a straight edge so follow the instructions of the pattern to clip at the corner so that it's easier and you don't get any tucks right there at the edge and then when you're okay. done with the outer edge do the same to the lining um, so that it looks the same then you're going to match up the top seam with right sides together and sew around with a half an inch seam allowance then turn it right side out and press it in place and then here I'm top stitching the basket I'm just doing one eighth of an inch away from the edge to keep that lining down inside the basket and then you are finished with your basket and because I'm so grateful for my followers and readers and that we love to sew together and work together I am going to be giving away this sewing gift basket you can enter on my blog the link is in the description and the giveaway is at the bottom of the post then to assemble the basket I put in the fat quarters I put those at the bottom to fill it out and make it nice then on top of that I put on the small pieces like the measuring tape the thimble the clippers the seam ripper the bag of buttons and tags and the pin cushion then on top of that I put the filler and then I put the scissors on top and it just the fabric filler makes it fill out and makes it look nice. Please like, this video. Please like this video and follow my channel for lots of sewing ideas. And I want to know who would you give this basket to or who do you want to give you this basket?